Welcome to those little pieces of failed print stuck on the bottom of your resin vat. But since you're watching this video, you probably don't even know what that feeling is yet. With 3D printing fast becoming a mainstream thing, and most people having printers in their house these days, I think it's time that we go over what kind of 3D printers there are out there, and what is best suited for your needs. In a nutshell, there is two types of 3D printers. FDM, which is Fused Deposition Modeling, and resin type printers. Resin printers can be broken up into multiple categories which I'll go over in this video as well. All of the printers that we can purchase for our home use at the moment are additive manufacturing processes. This means that a material is added layer by layer in order to create a model or other fabricated parts. There are multiple ways you can do this and as printers become cheaper and more available on the market more people are going to use them and more people are going to become experts in using these machines. This is why you've seen a huge boom in the model market at the moment where people are printing models and making their own statues and collectibles at the moment. This is something that I do personally. I only found this during the first lockdown in the UK. I had nothing better to do with my time and I originally had an FDM machine which I used for functional parts for my drone business. I used those parts to make functional camera holders which I placed on my drones and anytime one of them broke I was able to make a new one within a day or so. So let's start off with FDM or FFF printing. What the hell is this? FDM stands for Fused Deposition Modeling and FFF stands for Fused Filament Fabrication. Both of these types of printers are very similar to each other in the way that they print a filament type material which is heated up and oozed out of a hot end on the 3D printer which then draws the object line by line. In general, most people will print with PLA which is a polylactic acid. This is a material that is a plastic but has a low melting point and holds details a lot easier. It is not the strongest material but it is a good substitute for 99% of things that may be 3D printed in a person's home. It is also one of the easiest materials to get to print which makes it favorable by most newcomers to the hobby as well as even those who are in the hobby for a while. This is the kind of material that I use to print the bases on a lot of my models. This is where there isn't as much detail available for example as complicated intricate armor on the side of a model. Let's talk about resin printers. Resin printers can be broken up into multiple categories. A resin printer uses a liquid material and it uses a UV light to cure layer by layer the model that you are printing. This can be done obviously in multiple ways. The easiest and cheapest way for most companies to achieve this is by SLA or DLP. SLA stands for stereolithography and DLP stands for digital light processing. In both of these methods, it is a photochemical process whereby a liquid material is photochemically changed to harden or cure through a UV light shone at the object. This is usually sandwiched in between a screen which will then block out the light of the object that's being printed so that each layer is printed layer by layer. The main difference between an SLA printer and a DLP printer is that SLA uses a UV laser beam and DLP uses a UV light from a projector. There is another way of printing which is not as available to home printers at the moment. This is called SLS. This is selective laser sintering. And this is done through a powder by a laser in a similar way to SLA and DLP printing. However, this has not been as available on the market at the moment. It's a lot more difficult to get something like this to work in a home setting. However, I've noticed that they are starting to work on printers like this at the moment and we'll probably start seeing them come on the market a lot sooner than we expect. There are strengths and weaknesses to each type of printer. And it's going to depend on what kind of models you would like to print and it would depend mostly on what the kind of outcome you would like for your models to be. I will go over roughly what each type of machine does and what kind of materials it uses and hopefully you will be able to figure out for yourself what is going to suit you best in your situation. From here on I'm going to refer to FDM machines as FDM and I'm going to refer to resin printers SLA DLP as resin printers. It makes it a lot easier as many different printers are labeled as many different things, sometimes even mislabeled as what they not actually are. FDM machines use a filament. This comes on a roll and you can get this in multiple types of materials and many, many different colors. Some of the common types of materials that are used, PLA, TPU, PETG and nylon. Each type of material has its strength and weaknesses. PLA is the general all-purpose material. Most people print in PLA as it's easy to post process and it can print 99% of the things you want to print. The details held in something like this kind of material is usually extremely accurate and you can get 
even PLA in multiple types of PLA. TPU is a flexible filament. This is the kind of thing you would use to print housing or anything that you would need to be able to bend or flex. It is still super strong and holds together really, really well. Polythylene terephthalate glycol. That is a bloody mouthful for the kind of material that PETG is. This is a more durable material. It's also more resistant to chemicals and things like that. For example, if you're manufacturing a part that may be used in a specific machine or something that you need a lot more strength to the part to, PETG will be the better option over PLA. PLA is quite brittle and it doesn't hold as much strength as what PET does. However, printing in PLA is a heck of a lot easier than it is to print in PETG. You need higher temperatures. Sometimes you need to enclose your machine and make sure that the environment and everything around the machine is extremely correct before you can even bother printing with this kind of material. But as you get further down the road, you will start to learn tips and tricks which will make your printing experience so much easier. Let's go on to resin now. Resin you can find in multiple types. There is different types of material in resin as well. You get standard types of resin, you get water washable types of resin, you get flexible ones and you get wax like resins. The standard resin generally in grey tends to hold a lot better detail and this is the kind of thing that most modelers would use just based on its detail holding capabilities. Water washable was something that was created in order to be a bit more environmentally friendly. However, up till now a lot of people have had quite a few failures with water washable resins mostly after time the resin tends to crack i'm not sure if this is down to user error however i've never tested water washable resins mainly based on the fact that i've noticed online people complaining about cracks and things like that no ways i'm going to print a model paint it for 30 or 40 hours only for it to crack a couple of years down the line flexible resins can be mixed with your standard resins in order to create a slightly stronger or more flexible and less brittle mix this is really good for if you are shipping your prints or if you're making really large prints that you don't want to break when you move them to and from the places that you may display them. Wax like resin is an interesting thing. I would love to delve more into this in the future, but in a nutshell, it's basically a resin that prints almost like a wax. So you can use these things or these parts that you print in a lost wax resin cast where you can put the part into a mold and essentially burn out this wax in order to manufacture metal parts and things like that, specifically jewelries and other things of that nature. And as I said, because resins are a liquid, you can mix these two together. So you can use certain aspects of one resin to help benefit other aspects of other resin. This is something you would need to experiment and check with people online what they've used and what works best for them so you make sure you don't make a mistake in what you're doing. So with all printing, there is going to be some kind of cleaning process. FDM for the most part is ready straight off of the print bed. Most of the time you may need to remove a couple of supports and perhaps sand a few layer lines that may be causing issues. If that doesn't bother you, you can go ahead and paint it straight away. Resin on the other hand will need an alcohol rinse or bath because you'll need to remove the excess resin from the printing process as well as you will need to remove the supports. most of resin prints will have to have supports and these will need to be removed and in my opinion the best time to remove them is before you do the post cure and the post cure is something else that you need to do for resin printing you would need to cure the print straight after it has been cleaned in order to completely cure the resin that has slightly cured during the printing process in this section of the video I'm gonna go over some of the uses for different types of printers and in my case, I use my FDM printer for large things such as bases, stuff that perhaps doesn't fit into my resin printers. This is one of the things between FDM and resin printers. Most FDM printers are a lot larger on the print bed than what a resin printer is. Most of the home printers at the moment are quite small, but they are slowly starting to make them bigger with higher resolution as well. The problem as you go bigger, you start to have resolution issues because the screens and stuff like that need to be a lot higher resolution in order for you to get the same kind of detail as the smaller high resolution printers. The one thing about FDM printing is that it is a lot cheaper. Maybe that's specifically only for me over here in the United Kingdom where resin and in fact all parts that come from China seem to be inflated in price for some reason. So for me, it costs a lot less to buy a PLA roll of filament then it cost me to buy a bottle of standard resin. However, the most of my model is printed in resin, so I still have to buy that resin. And this brings me to resin printing being a hell of a lot more detailed and more refined for smaller parts, specifically intricate pieces like bases, armor, 
fingers, hands, things like that, that are a lot more complicated and detailed, and you can get much better results out of a resin printer. Now that's not to say that FDM cannot produce the same level of detail as what a resin printer can. However, for a similar part, you're looking at a lot longer times printing in FDM versus resin. You also need a lot more tuning and a lot more understanding of how the printer works before you can make your FDM printer print to the same level as a resin printer. Even then, you're still not going to get to the exact same level as some of the top end printers that you can find in the resin market. And at this part of the video, I'm going to recommend a couple of machines which I have personally used and I know for a fact work extremely well and a lot of people have great success with the same machines. Before I get onto that though, I'm going to say I haven't been able to test many different machines as I'm only a small channel and not many people are willing to send me products to review. So my opinion is based on what I've purchased with my own money and used during my time of 3D printing. By the way, I have asked a couple of companies to send me some stuff to review for you guys. However, most of them don't acknowledge me at the moment. So we'll wait and see. Perhaps in the future, I might be able to offer you more reviews and show you different machines if that is a thing that ends up happening. I'm gonna start off with my recommendations of machines. I started out with a second-hand machine which I got from my friend. I'd rather not name the machine because the machine that I received had been stripped and rebuilt by this person and is not an accurate representation of how that machine may have been out of the box. I struggled with this machine for many months, eventually giving up and packing it in as a bad idea because 3D printing was way too difficult for me. However, during the lockdowns, I needed something to do and I ended up buying a newer 3D printer, which was the Ender 3 Pro. I bought this machine based on a lot of recommendations online. I did a lot of research and figured out that most people recommend this machine as a cheap entry-level machine which works extremely well and even to this day people will still recommend this machine as will I because the machine itself is an incredible piece of work. So starting out with an Ender 3 Pro is probably the best way to go. It's extremely cheap entry level depending on where you are in the world. I know that in some parts of USA people were saying that they were getting the Ender 3 for around $100. Unfortunately in the UK they're usually around 150 to 200 pounds, which is still a really great price to get into 3D printing. I then moved on from that machine to a CR10 later on. I have the CR10S Pro 2, and I bought this machine because I needed a bigger print bed in order to print the bigger and larger bases that I had started making. My first resin printer came from Creality. Once I had realized that Creality was a brand that was pretty well known for their great machines and usually great customer service, I realized that I'd rather stick with that brand while I was learning how to do all this. And my first resin printer was an LD002R. And this machine blew my mind. I printed a lot of things on this machine. Most of my first models are printed on this machine and these are the models that I used to learn how to paint. These models taught me everything that I know now. I've failed a lot on this machine. Being a cheaper machine, it taught me how to replace screens. It taught me how to replace FEP sheets. It taught me a lot of the maintenance things that 3D printers need for you to keep them going. I then bought a Frozen Sonic Mini 4K. This is one of the highest resolution printers on the market at the moment, boasting a 35 micrometer XY resolution. This is the best resolution printer on the market until they release the 8K and that might just blow it out the water. However, I have not looked at the specs of the 8K yet, so I don't actually know the true capabilities of that machine. Yes, that was one of the machines I asked for and they completely told me that they don't send out any machines to any reviewers. However, I've seen a few reviewers getting machines but we won't talk about that. I then bought the Frozen Sonic Mighty 4K as the print space on the Mini 4K is a little bit small, specifically for large one quarter scale and other larger models that I was trying to print. So I bought the Mighty 4K in order to print those parts. The resolution on the Mighty is quite a bit lower than what it is on the Mini, boasting only 52 micrometers on the XY resolution versus the 32 of the Mini. So usually, I'll print torsos, legs, anything that's really too large to fit on my Mini, I'll print on the Mighty. Faces and things that have a lot of detail or focus areas on a model, I will print those on my Mini 4K. In order to get the best resolution, I'm gonna use that on the parts that I want you to focus on. There was one company, however, who did actually send me a machine, and this was Nova 3D. They sent me the Benny 4 Mono. 
of which I unboxed when I was still streaming on Twitch. This machine is a great machine. It has the tallest build volume of all the machines that I've used so far. So this machine for me is something that I use for things that really don't fit lengthways on any of my other machines. So let's move on to tips for if you're wanting to buy your first 3D printer. If you're looking at FDM machines and you think this is the kind of machine you would need for your purposes of printing, what you will need to buy is the machine, you'll need to buy filament, it's probably a good idea to buy a couple of spare nozzles and make sure you have a load of patience. Setting up these machines usually means you'd have to build the machine. Most machines come in a flat pack and you'd have to build the machine up and make sure you put the machine together correctly. This is one of the reasons why FDM can be a difficult area to get into, mainly because if you're not so good at building things or you get something wrong during the building process, you may have some issues that may pop up later on during your printing time. And if you don't know anything about the machines, this can cause some issues because you're not sure what you're looking for when you're looking for troubleshooting on the machines. Don't let this put you off though because there is a lot of help online, there is a lot of help in many of the Facebook groups and all over the internet. There is many videos on YouTube for you to watch to help you put your machines together. Most machines have a build video that go with them from many of the YouTubers that you find over here on YouTube. If you're going to buy a resin printer, you're going to need a couple more things than you would for buying an FDM machine. You're going to need the machine, you're going to need resin, but you're also going to need some kind of cleaning solution. And that, in most cases, would be alcohol, resins. After that, you're going to need a bunch of trays, you're going to need a load of kitchen towel, and you're going to need things to put a lot of messy objects into. There is an unfortunate stickiness that comes with resin and it's also not very good for you to have it on your skin. So I would suggest getting gloves as well. As you get further down in your career of printing, you'll start to learn how you can handle these things without even touching the resin. I use tweezers and I use a tray with a load of kitchen towel on the bottom and a scraper so I can remove the parts of my print bed and not touch them with my hands while I transfer them to the alcohol bars that they need to clean. After you've cleaned, you're gonna need a UV curing apparatus. This can be one of the ones that you buy from the manufacturers. They make curing specific machines, but you can also use a really cheap nail bar that you can find on Amazon or anywhere really online. All that said, I hope that this video gives you some insights onto 3D printing and the types of machines that you can get. If there is any questions that you have, on what machine you think would suit your needs or any other questions that you may have around 3D printing, please feel free to throw them in the comments below. Let's start a conversation. No question is too silly for me to answer. If you've just started 3D printing and you wanted some help or you would like to join a community where you can speak to other like-minded individuals, then feel free to check out my Patreon. We have a Discord group where a lot of the Patreons will discuss their prints show off their machines and talk about many things that are related to 3D printing and painting of these 3D prints. And speaking of those patrons, I'd like to thank the ones that are already currently supporting the videos. Having said that, we have got two more new patrons which I need to shout out for you guys today. The first one is Richard Stark. I'm sure he is somehow related to Iron Man, Tony Stark. And Jeff Richard. Again, if this video helped you in any way or answered some questions that you may have had rolling around in your head, please feel free to give it a like and make sure to leave a comment below. All the interaction on the video helps to put the video out to more people and more people deserve to know the answers that they've been searching for. Also, if you really didn't like the video, your dislike is an interaction that still helps the video. So to that one person who keeps disliking, I thank you very much for those minor interactions that you make with the channel. I feel like it'd be better if you just told me in the comments how much you dislike the video as well. That may help my interaction even more. And with all that being said, there is only one thing left that we can do in this particular video. That is to tell you, if you don't like, click the dislike and don't f off.